Okay, this video is called the irreducible complexity of Hedera Hashgraph. Now, what do I mean by irreducible complexity? Well, what it means is, is that when there is an item that uh, is built for a certain purpose, there is a certain number of parts that must be necessary for the purpose to, to be fulfilled. And any lack of any part of that item uh, will result in the purpose not being fulfilled. And what do I really mean by this? It's, I'll give you a quick example. So in the case of a wheel that can bear a load, there are some parts that um, are irreducibly complex so that that wheel works. And any, any part that is not there will render the wheel useless. So for an example, all wheels need a rim. Okay, so of course the rim is the outer circle of the wheel. And all wheels need a hub, the center. Because if the wheel doesn't have the hub, then you can't attach the spokes to the rim. So the the rim is irreducibly complex. The, the hub is a necessity and you've got the spokes. And it also needs an axle, which goes through to the other wheel over here. Okay, so, and that bears the load on the axle there. Okay, so you need the outer rim, the spokes, the hub, and the axle. That's irreducibly complex. If, you, if you're missing any one of these parts, the wheel doesn't work. Now, if you increase the purpose of the wheel, um, there are other parts of complexity you need to add. So, for example, if the wheel is going on a bitumen road, not just a dirt road, let's say, the, the wheel now needs rubber on the outside of the rim. Okay, so it needs rubber to meet the road. Okay, now, if it's a wet day, if it's raining, you need tread on the rubber. That's another complexity that you need to add. So depending on the job at hand, the item needs to be uh, complex to a degree and any lack of any of the parts makes it irreducible. So you can't reduce any of the parts to make the thing actually work. Now, in the case of distributed ledger technology, okay, <clears throat> the purpose of DLT is to spread ledger out. So you're here and you want to get a message to here, okay? Now, in the past, it had to go through a central server and the central server had the power over the data. Now, okay, we distribute that information to many and what it means is we don't have to depend on that centralized situation to get the message through because the message will get through in a decentralized fashion thus guaranteeing the message to get from here to here without any central power, okay? That is the goal of decentralized ledger technology. So for this to take place, there are certain things that need to happen, okay? If it's going to be a uh, mass adopted technology, okay? Of course, you need security, okay? You need scalability, Scalability, yep, and decentralization. Okay, now this is what's called the the trilemma, the uh, the blockchain trilemma. It's called because until now, um, it, it hasn't been established that any blockchain can fulfill these purposes. Okay, so it's not quite complicated enough to handle the three things that it needs to handle, okay, until Hedera Hashgraph came along. Now, what's something else that uh, needs to be decentralized? Okay, um, we know that central banks 
can be a problem. Okay, and one of the promises of Bitcoin was a decentralized currency, but unfortunately, it doesn't have enough complexity to handle this situation to become a you know a, an alternative to central banks because there's no scalability and not really the best security and it's not decentralized you see because the mining right now is handled about 70 percent of the mining is handled in china so if the ccp the chinese central government wants to confiscate those mining rigs it, it can and, and that will affect the bitcoin network okay so it's not really cent decentralized you see so <clears throat> what's another one um, central data centralized data that's the internet decentralization needs to take place uh, big tech places like you know Facebook, YouTube, <clears throat> any central server that can be hacked or crashed or control your data or, or, or order your data in a different way to where a different outcome can take place. Um, there is a problem here also, okay? People want control of their own data. And there's also centralized government. Now, Anything centralized tends to be inefficient, and that includes government. So um, decentralizing government is something that can be helped with distributed ledger technology, but this one here is probably a subject for another video, okay? Because this can't be done just online. It has to be done in the real world, so to speak, okay? And distributed ledger technology will just augment uh, as an auxiliary to those actions that happen in the real world. Okay, once again, probably a subject for another video, but we can focus on these two today. Now, <clears throat> for the banks, you see, um, Bitcoin can't, re can't replace the, um, the, the, the currencies of the world, okay, because you've got the central banks that actually um, have dollars and, and things like this, these, these devices. And what DLT will do, it will allow the CBDCs to occur where the central bank will wrap their currency in, let's say, a H-bar, okay, to transmit it across borders internationally, so forth and so on, for a fraction of the price that, that it does so far. Now, that, that means that the central bank's currency will still be the currency, but now what it is, it is subject to the technology which is a step in the right direction because the technology is not controlled by the bank. So the bank is relinquishing uh, some of its um, you know, um, central power to the holders of the technology, which if you hold HBAR in this case, that means you. Okay, so it is a step in the right direction. And what banks really were for in the past were basically the middleman of trust where someone can um, interact and transact with other people through the intermediary, which is the trust section of the uh, arrangement. But now with DLT, that that becomes the trust in the relationship. The bank is no, really not really necessarily required and uh, in, in the transaction. And also the bank was also a place, a trusted place where you could store your wealth. Um, and now that's no longer needed necessarily. If HBAR is wealth, well, uh, or, or even CBDCs are wealth, okay, which that's what they're going toward, um, what's going to happen is that's all stored on the ledger now. So the wealth is stored on the ledger, the trust is stored on the ledger, so the bank is really no longer necessary, necessary in its um, traditional capacity. So it has reduced the power, the central power of the bank, and now it becomes more into the decentralized situation where you've got lots of banks that are going to go to CBDCs. There's going to be more competition, less chance of the you know monolithic type 
the bank con controlling the world, although it, it still does at this point, but it is, like I said, a step in the right direction. And without the irreducible complexity of Hedera Hashgraph, this just can't take place because you can't run a CBDC on a blockchain, okay? So banks want security, banks need scalability, and the way that the CBDCs work is on a decentral distributed ledger, which that's what Hashgraph is. Another one is centralized data. And this is the big one, really. Okay, now the goal of Hedera Hashgraph was so that people could have shared worlds online where they could create a world of their own and share it with other people. Okay, now to this date, that has not been able to occur because of the centralized server situation where you need to be a gigantic company to have the computing power, okay, to, um, yeah, to, to host a, you know, host a, um, a website that's big enough where people can come and gather and, and communicate. And the owner of that website would be in control of all those people because they are in control of the data, okay? But now, with Hedera Hashgraph, anyone can create an app, okay, that uh, is only known to them, okay? So it's their own world online because no one else really knows about it, um, not even Hedera knows about it, and they can share that world. So this, ha this hasn't been able to happen without Hedera Hashgraph. Okay, and that's why there is <clears throat> the irreducible um, situation of um, the Hashgraph algorithm that sits on the bottom. Okay, and, and this pr provides the speed, the security, and scalability through sharding. And then you've got the Hedera layer, which also produces security through its governance. And it also provides its scalability because it means that there is no chance of a fork, okay? And that means the uh, network can grow as far as mass adoption, in industrial adoption, because people trust the network. Okay, so that's a necessary, irreducible part, the Hedera part. People, um, people complain sometimes that Hedera is a centralizing um, aspect of the uh, the network. However, we need to look at this part of it, okay? Because um, without Hedera. Um, not only will you not have these things, so it can go into mass adoption, which is the whole goal, because if there's no mass adoption, well, um, you, you can't take the central power away from banks and, 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 and big data and so forth, so you need mass adoption. Don't forget, the mass adoption is a big part of the, uh, the purpose of, of any distributed ledger technology. So without Hedera, you can't have mass adoption because of forking. Okay, so don't forget. So that's an irreducible complexity of the, 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 the equation here. And also, the reason we need Hedera is so people can build their own apps on top and so that you can have a shared world with anyone you like. And that is the main decentralizing part of this whole thing because that makes the internet decentralized. The fact that you can have a shared world on top of Hedera, which provides this through the inability to fork and so forth and provide ABFT security from Sybil and, and DDoS attacks, the fact that you can have a shared world, must there must be a Hedera layer for this because that also includes the HBAR that allows for, um, that, that, that is the fuel of the entire network that allows for the privacy because no one is spying on you to pay for your internet experience, which is happening now with big tech. They use the advertising model to pay for your so-called free experience. Um, 
the H, uh, the Hedera layer is where the H bar fuel sits to make this whole thing happen. So H bars an irreducible complexity. Hedera is an irreducible complexity, and the Hashgraph algorithm itself is a, an irreducible complexity of the end goal, which is a private shared world that's secure. Okay, and that you can transmit funds and wealth. Okay, so. Um, not necessarily needing a bank to transfer wealth, okay. Not necessarily needing big data to go to a central server, okay. So um, that is the definition of decentralization, the shared world idea. And that's what Lehman started off with in the first place and just reverse engineered it from there. So started off with Hashgraph, then went to Hedera, and now it's possible where anybody can create an app which is owned 100% by them, so further decentralizing the internet space. Okay, and creating a shared world for a fully decentralized internet that is totally within your power. Okay, so that's why these things exist. Okay, it's not centralized because there's a Hedera. It's not centralized because there is a patent on Hashgraph, okay? So no cowboys can come along and fork the network. So then there's no, um, uh, there's no industrial um, uptake because there's forks, there's no um, stability there, okay? It has to be that Hashgraph is patented, okay? It has to be that Hedera is on top of Hashgraph, Okay, it has to be that Hedera has council members that govern uh, the um, the network, so there's no forking once again. Okay, all of these things are necessary to provide for a shared world, and um, without any of these particular parts, a shared a shared world is not possible. Okay, so before people go off and say Hedera Hashgraph is centralized, they need to consider all of these factors and. They need to realise that um, there is a that the means, okay, justify the end, okay. So don't get hung up on the fact that Hashgraph is patented. Don't get hung up on the fact that Hedera is a centralised layer, okay, which it really isn't because of the end result. Anyway, just a quick one. And until next time, peace.